Mr. Ingram, we're ready to begin. Uh, members, items 8, 10, and 12, uh, I would propose as being uh, consent candidates unless members have questions.
you folks not great. Uh, and we need to work to change that. And unfortunately, we're in a generation where uh, we don't use mail, uh, millennial stems. Uh, we pay our bills online, uh, we register for classes online, heck, we even meet our partners online. Uh, and so a lot of us don't even carry stamps. And so when you gotta go to the post office, buy stamps uh, before you're able to vote, you've created a barrier. And in uh, Westwood, we saw that translate to students not voting by mail. We saw thousands of people in line to vote. Uh, very, very long lines of discouraged students from voting. So we'd like to change that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, okay, Patty and Bruton. Uh, we'll be followed by Marcus. Good afternoon. My name is Patty Berman. I'm the president of the Downtown Los Angeles Neighborhood Council. And I would like to speak in favor of this program most vehemently. Neighborhood councils were created because every neighborhood was different and their needs were different. If you take a look at my area, putting a single polling place somewhere in downtown for six hours, hoping that by half a million people who work here and 65,000 people who live here will be able with any sense to get to that place is not feasible. The online voting gives my stakeholders a chance to not be disenfranchised. And it's very important to us that they have an opportunity to vote. Well, they all vote, of course, not. But if it is made so difficult, then they won't vote at all. LA doesn't have that great a, uh, a track record for attracting people to vote, so making it more difficult is not acceptable. Let's do something to make it more modern and more easy to vote. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Levengood, followed by Sean Starkey. Uh, thank you, members of the committee, for letting me speak in support of approving the pilot program for Green Online Voting to LA. My name is Marcus Levengood, and I'm a stakeholder here in downtown, and I only live here, but I run my theater education business in the beautiful historical world. The one thing my generation wants to do in these troubling times is to participate. But because voting is so restrictive, they feel disenfranchised, like Patty had said. Sometimes working two jobs or having to hop from apartment to apartment because of rent fluctuations makes it even harder for us in downtown LA to get to the polls. By approving online voting, especially this pilot, we can send a message that we encourage participation and are not roadblocks for progress. By not allowing this, we'll be known as a body that allows restricting voting. We don't communicate via mail anymore, we communicate with this. Let's encourage the vote, let's be a beacon of progress, and let's bring LA into the 21st century of online voting. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, Chairman Corey and Council members. My name is Sean Clarkies. I am here on behalf of Council Member Jose Wegar and in support of this item. I understand that the city clerk is on a tight timeline to get ready for the next year's election, so we are very appreciative of you taking us up today. Online voting has been very well received in our downtown area, where it has increased voter participation, and we want to see them continue to act as good. I also hope that this opportunity is also available to other neighborhood councils who wish to use it. We recognize that not all neighborhood councils want to use online voting and simply wish to have it available to those who want access to this choice. I know the online platform needs to be updated, and we support continuing the new pilot program to allow the 10 neighborhood councils who want to participate the opportunity to opt into the program. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Ms. Walton and Ms. Lou, are you Thank you. 
build out last year. So the build out is now ready to go for, I mean, we're ready to start the build out, but we need, we need the time and the money to move forward. Um, we have asked to do all we can, but we do any more than that, um, because we want to make sure any deadline would be successful. Included in the motion with a number of report backs that we will be happy to um, answer in writing within the time period stated and happy to answer any questions. <laughs> So, um, first of all, I appreciate your comments about the time. Can we make this work now? If we were to pass this through committee and through council, do you feel like you can still administer this election after these elections that are currently? Yes, because what we would do is we would move the tent that we were doing online, we would move them to the very end. So they would pull up the 13th. Uh, we could create a new contract associated with the election. Uh, we would plan to do which gives us the six months we think is now in Iowa to get the system off. And get us a chance to test it and everything. Great. And how many vendors responded to the RFP? Great job. Yeah, the initial RFP is three, um, but only two was going to be vetted. And then for um, we selected everyone counts based on their record of um, online secure elections and the fact that they Number 
two is neighborhood council elections are especially prone to being contested uh, because much about neighborhood councils uh, is a very contentious process. And when you have uh, groups of people who are fighting hard over 25 votes, there are apt to be uh, lots of contentious debates. So auditability of election results and verifiability of uh, Result. Without a paper trail, is this is part of a national conversation about online voting, and it's especially pronounced in situations like this. So I hope that the result of the pilot program will be some very strict guarantees of auditability of results and a process by which a, a challenge can be thoroughly and respectfully uh, taken up And then finally, um, is, is cost. We're going to spend on this pilot program. The proposal is to spend over two hundred thousand dollars. How much right now is being spent, is budgeted for uh, outreach for our neighborhood council elections? We have uh, three hundred thousand that the city council set aside annually, and there's seventy thousand that we received in the initial approval. And there's approximately $25,000 left over. If it comes from the city fund takes the $250,000. Okay, so less than $400,000 for the entire city of Los Angeles to do election outreach. And we're talking about spending over $200,000 to have online elections so that people will find it easier to vote by using their phones. That's all well and good, but if no one knows that an election is happening, if no one has ever heard of their own neighborhood council, if no one knows that they're a stakeholder, if no one knows when the election is happening or what the procedure is for voting, the ease of using your phone to, to do that is going to be of zero value. So outreach, to me, is the secret in getting people to participate in neighborhood council. Outreach and making people feel that they have a meaningful choice that will result in meaningful outcomes in their life. And that's far more important than the supposed barriers of entry of voting because it's too hard to go someplace to vote and where to vote on your phone. So I just, until we actually have more than 100 people voting in every neighborhood council across. Los Angeles, I think discussions about ease of voting are ludicrous. Uh, until we have more than a tenth of one percent of people in the city who even know we have a neighborhood council system, I think the idea of ease of voting is is a waste of breath. So that's so that's my miniature rant. Uh, but but I'm, so I, I'm pleased to be moving forward with this and hopefully resolve some of these issues. But just know that I am a hard sell on this. And I think that our, our failure so far has been to convince people to vote. It hasn't been that we've prevented them from voting, it's that we are not convincing them to vote. And that's, to me, the, the far more important uh, first step. So with that, members, I have a for your So, Mr. Mark. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I agree with a bunch of what you said. Uh, we appreciate your analysis and your concerns. Uh, uh, and I want to thank the gentleman from Bill Brandon for coming down. Uh, if there's any place in my district that I want to see online voting, it's Bill uh, which has some of the lowest participation uh, in, in, in the county. The second one would be West LA. Uh, but uh, I'm very concerned about this, and I've heard positive things from some parts of my district and neighborhood councils and, and negative things. Let me ask a couple of questions. The, the motion before us asks three things. Uh, transfer the money, pay to go ahead and get started on this, uh, and uh, come back and answer some of our questions. But why would we do the first two things before the third? Because of time. I, if I don't have the money this week, if, I don't, if I'm not moving forward with the contract, it's dead. There's no coming back. 
So my 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 concern about this is that it's similar to the other parts of the program. I have um, uh, contested elections all the time, which is very serious. And there, there always is, generally, there is a, a, a theme that somebody sort of created their own life. Ten years ago, it was that the uh, developer of Flat Vista, the Bureau of Pizza, the construction workers, and got the vote for the A few years ago, Social service agency bust in homeless people from around uh, the west side and the north of Venice. And last year it was uh, all the restaurant owners got their employees and customers. How does this not intensify that problem? If we don't have registered voters, how does, how does for example, how would this not allow someone to sit on? and just get a bunch of tourists to vote in the Madison County election. It doesn't, but it turns us into the way. Well, the, 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 the current system means you have to take all of the folks and get them to hop on a bird scooter, apparently, and go to uh, the open rec center to vote. Uh, under, under this, people could be doing it live on that. Theoretically, I'm not sure how likely that is, given that people don't choke the vote now, as Mr. McClain pointed out. You know, I don't know that this is the election that people necessarily gain more than any other elections. So, I mean, so the so country of gaining elections has gone on for a few hundred years. Well, let me push back on that, because uh, I am the recipient of change.org petitions on absolutely everything. Uh, from development proposals to the, 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 the color of the sky. Uh, and no matter how intensely local the issue, without fail, there are always people from Virginia. Uh, I don't know why Virginia, but there's always people from Virginia. So if, if you, if you. If you if I think that, 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 that the definition of stakeholder needs to be tightened up. That's that kind of the, the largest issue that we've had. Throughout the different kinds of elections has been the definition of interested stakeholder. Because you could make you could make an argument right or wrong, you could make an argument on how somebody in Virginia might have a stake in your guys' board law. I visit there twenty times a year and I I it would be hard not to accept that as a I I agree with the problem with stakeholder needs to be fixed. What I'm concerned about is putting this card before that it. Uh, it's, to me, it's like you have a, a, a problem to have a leaky roof. It's another thing to have a leaky roof and you spray hose on, on your roof. And I'm just afraid of that happening here and poisoning, poisoning not just whatever the particular election is, but poisoning what is a very, very good idea. Like I think some of our neighborhood councils absolutely need this. And I'm afraid if we, we start it without the right safeguards in place, it'll kill it for a generation. It's kind of a chicken and egg argument, though, in that if you don't build it, you can't, you, you can't start to fix any of the issues unless you've already built the system. You can't put in the safeguards until the system is, is actually there. We can't build the system until we secure the vendor and have obligated to pay the vendor. So I can't. But the system can't address what I was talking about. No, that, that's a process. That's part of the process that we would have to build into how documentation is received, which neighborhood councils um, are ultimately selected because there's more, right now, there's 22 interested, yeah. and we only have slots for 10. So, <coughs> for safeguarding people's um, information, as um, Chairman Picori pointed out, is key, but also how we um, treat each of those voters, but that very same issue when these paper elections came up in Korea now, this most recent uh, subdivision, and it's still an ongoing issue for the Soros Health Control. That everybody is always saying, well, somebody else did not have the right to vote. Right. And the city group is always going to take the most liberal definition to allow the most people to vote. Right. Can I also add as well, with online voting, uh, with self affirmation uh, voters, you still need to provide a photo ID, which is 
actually more, um, it was more, uh, more proof that we meant So right now, it's not that much. You can show up and say, I, have, I am who I am. So how does the ID thing work with this? People will be scanning their ID? You can either scan, or you know, we also had a pop up voter registration where we could uh, cut the spot, look at it, and then, and then register. So, so that thing about making a uh, tablet uh, to let us be instruct you to just randomly um, register people, you wouldn't be able to do that. Um, but now city current still vetting that person at the very end. The reason we had to add uh, a picture ID for online voting was so that if they voted online, they wouldn't then come to the poll and vote again. So so that was the major change for online voting for some affirmation. So right now, um, you know, we have all the other questioning and anyone can come and vote. So uh Sunday afternoon, somebody asked me to vote. I put my photo ID in. I go somewhere else three hours later. How did the system stop me from voting the second time? So on, on the online system, you, you wouldn't even go somewhere else. What do you mean to go somewhere else? You use the same ID as every time? Mm -hmm. No, it would be cross checks. Oh, cross -checks. Check. Yeah. My name, my address, that kind of thing. I was going to think, I, I appreciate what you're saying. I mean, I like always trying to find new technologies to, to make voting easier, to make governance easier. I think most of the concerns are about the bigger issues in terms of what is a stakeholder? How do we define that? Um, we've been trying to do that for a number of years, and we still haven't mastered that. And that's that's a problem. It's just it can be accentuated by uh, online voting, but it's not. I don't think it gets solved or unsolved in online voting. It's just it's just more just more in some cases is better. So uh, I'm also concerned about the, the money aspect that you talked about. There's 215,000. For all, you were saying it's 400,000, I thought it was 215 for, for all of the companies. It, it is, if, if you add everything up, we're able to get the 25,000 account that online voting is coming from, then it would be 400,000. 400,000. 400,000 for outreach, 215 was, it's a different box, but yeah. I don't want to oversimplify it, but there were different accounts in the Indiana appropriate account. One of them had 200 and I don't even know, 240. Okay. Okay. And we're taking 215 of that, the remainder of which, 25 of which goes to her outreach and helps make up the entire 400. So, so um, for the 90 neighborhood councils that are not going online, mm -hmm. the uh, average amount of money that they're going to spend on outreach is going to go from what was, it, what was it last year and what will it be there this year? For our outreach, yeah. So so last election cycle, um, we probably only had about 200,000 for our outreach, uh, citywide. So we have more this time, but we know that citywide outreach requires a lot more resources than what's provided. So what we're doing is we are trying to maximize uh, the outreach with digital ads. Um, we're also, it's not all high tech, we're trying to do low tech things, uh, low tech uh, uh, collaborations as well with nonprofits and schools um, in order to get to their databases. Uh, so how we are going to be putting the 400,000 um, is portion of that is going to go to citywide outreach and then we're actually going to help those neighbor councils in the last one or two election cycles who have really not been able to um, get new candidates or have very significant low voter turnout. Uh, we want to work with 30 of the neighbor councils to focus on uh, some outreach. So, additional 50,000 will be just focused on those 30 neighbor councils. So, like 10 neighbor ten councils will get the intense spending, the other ones won't get any additional. 
so at 100, we're looking at um, significant dollars at that point. Right. Uh, well the economy scale was, they did give us quotes for it personally rather than the UI. So, for example, for 20, um, What would it be for all of uh, the estimated cost? You know, in terms of the staff time on that, we have a cost estimate on all staff costs on. Uh, on the 370, I mean, on all nine, no. We only have for the, for doing the 10, of that 215,000. Right. Uh, so we, don't, we don't really know true cost, like what it would cost the city if we went citywide on this. No, so not the city on staff. We don't. We need really not like that out. We can. Um, we, what we did was for the 10, right. the vendor is we are charging that or they're charging us 100,000 and 115,000 for the equipment. Okay. So I'm going to take a couple, a couple different um, perspectives on this. First, being financial. Um, on that front is my concern on the financial side of it, which is um, my least of the concerns. But on the financial side of it, uh, usually when we look at or I look at a pilot program, um, the idea of that is it's a pilot meaning that if it works out well, we're going to expand it, not do a pilot one-off. Um, that would be a one-time program. This is a pilot. Um, the intention, you, usually for me, is on a pilot program, it means that we're going to test it. We're going to have a bunch of techniques, and um, if it really works, um, roll it out everywhere, right? And so, um, usually on that, it, it's sort of akin to test driving a car. Um, we'd never go out and test drive a car if I knew what was the what was different, what was the cost going to be, and what options we were going to look at. So, if we're going to pay cost, if we're going to pilot something, no matter what that pilot might be in LA on some new program, then what are we really looking at on the boat to kind of approve that pilot if we were taking it citywide, all in for staff time, including better costs? I'm just just making a statement, right. I mean, that's where I'm coming from. Um, so on the financial side of it, um, I do have to sort of not knowing eyes wide open, because then all of a sudden we come back and say, oh, we're great, okay. Um, and you can work out the bugs, and now we're going to go see why, and oh, by the way, we're probably looking at really bucks. Oh, I mean, we just don't know. So that's a little bit of a concern, but again, at least of my, my concern. My biggest concern is, is more along the lines um, where uh, our chairman opened it up with, um, and that is that um, the target market on this, our audience, our stakeholders, the key constituencies that vote in these elections aren't, um, in the technical sense, voters, if you will. Um, these are local stakeholders, and there's a difference. And we still have the issue of defining what stakeholder means. Uh, I did have the experience, as many of my colleagues have, where, where they were counseling who are not public officials, but strictly advisory under the charge to the elected body. Um, and that's important to know. Um, stakeholders have not been very loosely defined. And with that, I had the experience, um, as others have, where uh, there was a school in my district, a private school looking to expand. And um, they could not get the support of the local area council. So instead, they took over the neighborhood council. The entire area council and then voted for the expansion of the school. Well, uh, in fact, David Duke did a very interesting op ed piece on this, uh, or editorial on this, because they, David Council members were so upset with this that they actually went to the Daily News and asked them to write an editorial. So the Daily News did, and the editorial said this was great that the school did this because this is democracy game game, not declared. <laughs> and said, Democracy is a bad form of government, but it's also the best one that's ever been created. And it went on to say that that it's upon it's incumbent upon the local community to get involved. Um, it was interesting, but it was an experience. And then after they got the school expanded, they all resigned from the board, and the old players came back. Um, we had celebrities coming to vote and all kinds of people. Um, but they were stakeholders because their kids went to school. Long story short is um, the idea and the concept for me of neighborhood councils, which are a great grassroots organization about people that are involved and care a lot about what happens.
athletes that are from the home block in their own neighborhood. Um, this is the most basic form of grassroots governance that I've ever seen. And I've been president of my HOA, I've been involved on a lot of a lot of different organizations. And this takes that away. This takes away the spirit on online voting, again, not registered voters. It's not about, and for me, I want to see as many voters participate in as many elections as possible. We should, you know, early voting is great, early registration is great, allowing now with what our Secretary of State, Alex Media, did in getting 16 and 17 year olds in the state of California to pre register is awesome. I, mean, I, I love these opportunities. Um, not the paper tells us it's a completely different animal. And it really is. And um, for me, uh, it's really about that. Right? It's not about just getting voter numbers up. I want people to actually go to the meetings. I want people to weigh in on local issues um, and really participate. Those are the folks you really want voting and engaging on neighborhood councils. My big concern on this, and I'll close with this, is that if it comes time for um, uh, developer, if you will. That's what we really see most of the activity the people participating in, 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 in local grassroots efforts in this city. As in their community, the most disruptive thing you can bring is a change in often other development projects. Um, if they go out and do online links to get folks and their supporters to register to vote in that one day the council and take them like we did see School where they want to reach that. It would be very easy. It absolutely would be done much harder than organic folks turning out um, at a neighborhood council uh, election. So, for me, supporting even a pilot, we don't know the financial cost of city life. A pilot means that the work should go everywhere. Um, I'm not sure the list is going to. Uh, I'm only aware of one or two in the city that have very specific issues where it's very different. We're trying to apply for the one size fits all, it just doesn't. I know we're trying to solve for those one or two. I'd be more inclined to support some kind of program that would allow those one or two and not just randomly pick 10 out of the year. I don't even know how the center select the power point. Who picks those? How? What's the methodology of that? We had to report back. That's funny. So, so to give money and then report back, goes back to my clients. Um, so for me, um, this does not kill it by money now. This postpones it. There's a difference. I don't think there's any question on the table. Maybe it's important. So, um, just in response to the pilot program definition, are you pitching it in that district there? I don't think that it should imply that we will just take a step forward in trying a new approach, that that implies that we're committed to the whole approach. In fact, quite to the contrary. It is the nature of the neighborhood council movement that each neighborhood council is intended to be unique, to determine its own processes, its own rules. That was baked into this process from the very beginning of it. And so it, it might very well be that after conducting a pilot program, only two neighborhood councils decide that they're interested in online voting. Or it might be that 80 decide, and 20 decide that no, that's not for us. It, that could be totally, um, but we, it will be the results of the pilot program that will, I think, guide the neighborhood council in making that determination. And then as far as we're concerned, before we were to write the big check to the uh, city budget, this gives us an opportunity to assess cost effectiveness too. Because if the argument is that online voting will improve participation, well, let's find out. Because if we're going to spend two hundred thousand dollars and see a one percent increase or no increase in participation, that's going to tell me that two hundred thousand dollars would have been a lot better spent on outreach. Uh, but I, I, I feel that way, but I don't know that, and I won't know that until um, until we get the results. So that that's why I'm I'm fine moving forward with a small, you know, tour of the water, even though I'm far from. Uh, wider approach. Let me just throw out one other concern that I have that I hope will be taken into account in the future deciding 